Hello everyone, uh, another quick episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Um, I got uh, a question from Papal Legate Pupé, I assume that is how it's pronounced, um, and uh, I wanted to comment on it because uh, um, it is something that uh, I sort of, I'm interested in the subject. Uh, he asks, uh, hey Boyan, what do you think about the Catholic Church uh, delaying the beatification of Fulton Sheen? I'm kind of shocked that anyone is opposing his cause for sainthood. Uh, thank you for your question, uh, people like it, Pupé. Uh, well, first of all, um, I am shocked as well, uh, and saddened, because I was really hoping he would get canonized. Of course, as an Orthodox Christian, that decision does not influence me in any sort of way because I still couldn't, you know, pray to him. Uh, but, however, I still would like uh, to see that uh, uh, he would get the re recognition that he deserves. However, I also su uh, support, uh, you know, taking extreme uh, prudence and uh, when it comes to when it comes to canonization of saints because you don't want to canonize hastily uh, on uh, our podcast the uh, church mars chronicles there is an episode um, called um, <laughs> it has dark saints in its name and uh, there I rant about a hasty canonization in the Serbian church that I really, really hated. And I would hate for something similar to happen with Sheen, even though, uh, even though if the verse came to pass, it is still not as bad as we had it in the Serbian church. So, uh, why was uh, the canonization delayed? Well, uh, Supposedly, they wanted to check if Sheen uh, mishandled uh, some uh, clerical abuse cases, so he wasn't uh, accused of anything, uh, and in all probability he wasn't, but some additional checks need to be made, and again, I'm in full support of this. Uh, however, you know, uh, I will say something controversial and simply roll with it, you guys do what you want with it. Uh, however, um, Assuming he mishandled those cases, I, again, I don't know how he mishandled them precisely, so, however, uh, um, in Shin's time, there was a certain way you handled, or, as we would say today, not handle these cases, and these things shouldn't, um, you know, shouldn't surprise us, uh, because... Um, I don't know. Uh, I personally believe that today it is much easier for a bishop to deal with uh, a predator priest or for law enforcement to, you know, deal with a predator bishop or something than it was some 50 years ago. Uh, and as I mentioned before, a, a lot of times, uh, 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 um, <laughs> how should I put this? Um, um, we fail to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Uh, 50 years ago, it was um, next to unheard of, you know, for you to uh, uh, accuse, you know, clergymen of uh, sexual abuse, especially when it comes to children, you know. Um, myself, I am very much... Um, I don't know how uh, how far these uh, uh, these uh, abuse scandals uh, developed over time, but I would be very much uh, like to see, uh, uh, like to see some sort of you know uh, unbiased uh, uh, unbiased study of them, you know. Not something that is designed to, you know, destroy the Catholic Church or something, or to prove a point. You know, simply how did this whole thing happen? And it is a difficult thing to do, because the causes of this clerical abuse are very difficult to pinpoint, you know? Um, so, uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, to say is, um, 
perhaps for his time, Shin acted in the best way he knew how. And of course, the gut reaction there is generally to protect, you know, the uh, protect the the reputation of the church. Again, this is a very wrong thing to do, but from his from his uh, time, that may be understandable. I, I will list uh, uh, an example. For example, we all know that slavery is bad. Uh, however, uh, um, there were many Christian slave owners, especially, you know, in the early church. And as Christianity developed and uh, it gained more, tra more traction, uh, slavery started to die out, you know. Um, and, you know, death of slavery is primarily something that Christianity did for the world. So, uh, even, even though it did, uh, it wasn't so explicit in condemning it, you know. Uh, but this isn't about, this isn't uh, so much about, you know, uh, me talking about slavery. The point is, um, very often when you read the lives of the early saints, uh, there is a, basically a trope of a saint uh, freeing his slaves, you know, before going on a martyrdom, um, or simply before entering a monastery and so on. Um, even though these people are generally portrayed as being very pious, you know, uh, uh, they didn't free their slaves, you know, instantly when they became Christians. There is usually something saying that they were very kind to their slaves and so on. But uh, from their worldview, uh, freeing slaves was not something that you do instantly. And that is similar with uh, child abuse cases, because perhaps in his time it wasn't something um, uh, that was reported at least to him often. And you didn't have procedures, policies, how to deal with it properly. Again, I don't know. You guys feel free to correct me. I don't know. So, you know, I'm just trying to say uh, that sainthood uh, is something that you can achieve despite your failings and wrong decisions. And, you know, raping a child is more than a wrong decision. It's ghastly. Uh, but mishandling a case can be, you know, a wrong decision. And um, may God preserve us for, from ever having, you know... To experience it firsthand, um, I think that delaying the canonization as much as I hate it is a good thing. Um, there were saints who were canonized like 500 years after their passing, and that is fine. And as whether Bishop uh, Sheen should be canonized, well, I can't. Uh, I can't decide on that, and uh, it only remains to be Sheen.